This is a, a printed pattern, shoulder patch, of the British Airborne Division's World War II. Um, it shows the uh, Bellerophon figure, a strider Pegasus, in pale blue on a dark maroon background. It was worn by all airborne troops as a shoulder patch, divisional patch. When worn, they were always worn as a matched pair. The Pegasus always faced inwards towards each other, so that when worn on the shoulder, the Pegasus always faced forward. So, that being the case, this patch is a right arm shoulder patch. Um, <clears throat> for many years, the so-called experts in military collecting, and yes, you do have people who argue blue is black, dismissed this patch because, although they say Pegasus was a winged horse, Pegasus was not a unicorn. And in these experts' view, how come Pegasus is shown with the horn on its forehead? You get that? You see where it's at? This, this patch is very, very washed out. So what you can see is the underlying material. But they say Pegasus, it's a winged horse, yes. But how come there's a horn on its head? Only unicorns have a horn, therefore badges like these are fake. And so you say to these experts, if the badge is a fake, how come in this 1942 photograph, if you look really closely, you can just about see a, in inverted commas, horn on the Pegasus's head. And it completely baffles them because for years badges like these were dismissed as fakes because people thought that to distinguish them from fakes manufacturers deliberately made them given Pegasus a horn on its head. Well actually the badge doesn't show Pegasus with a horn on its head. What it actually shows is that Pegasus being a winged horse it's got two wings obviously. One on this side of its body and that is the tip of the wing on the other side of its body so even some books that were printed in the 70s and 80s state that a well-known fake of the Pegasus badge shows Pegasus as a unicorn well it actually isn't that's the tip of the wing on the other side of its body and also available in embroidered cloth um, the only other variant of the wartime Pegasus badge is those worn by Indian troops have the word India incorporated into the badge somewhere. Um, it was worn by all airborne troops and there were no separate badges at the time to distinguish between the units of the 1st and 6th British Airborne Divisions. The badge was designed by an Edward Seagore who was a landscape artist. Now below the badge on a separate maroon strip, when worn, is the word airborne, and above it is the regimental title of the regiment of the guy that's in it. And obviously, because it's airborne, the guy will wear the red beret with the unit badge as depicted on the title. In this case, it's the anti tank artillery, so because it's artillery, he wears the Royal Artillery Cap Badge. Now, it was in November 1941 that Major General Sir F.E.M. Browning was appointed GOC and the Airborne Forces being able to take shape with the formation of the 1st Parachute Brigade. Now, this was the result of the hard work of experiment and development which had commenced in the summer of 1940. February 1941 had seen the first British airborne action. On the 10th of that month, the first British parachute is to drop on enemy territory landed in Italy near Monte Volturi with the objective of destroying the aqueduct water supply of the province of Apulia. This was followed by the successful airborne action of Bruneval near Le Havre. From these beginnings, the airborne forces grew and by May 1943, two airborne divisions had been formed in the UK. So there's no real distinction between the first and the 6th Airborne Division. So the badge was worn by both divisions. The 1st Airborne Division first went into action in North Africa in 1942 when in support of the 1st British Army 
The first parachute brigade were also the task of capturing and securing the field of Bourne. This was successfully accomplished. A second landing was effected at Souk El Araba. The initial task complete, the formation fought as an infantry division during the winter of 42-43, when the first army was holding on to the scattered line from Cap Serrat to Mejez El Bab. With the collapse and final surrender of the Axis forces in Tunisia, the preparations went ahead for the invasion of southern Europe. The first airborne division took part in the invasion of Sicily in July 43. First glider-borne troops landed on the 9th and 10th, and three days later paratroops were dropped in the vicinity of Syracuse. The division also took part in the invasion of the Italian mainland, landing at Taranto, and pushing forward to the capture of Castellaneta, the air landing brigade op occupied Foggia. As the invasion progressed and more men became available, the airborne troops were relieved in the forward positions and the division was withdrawn and returned to the UK. The formation's next action was in Holland. It was the first airborne which won fame at Arnhem during those days, 17th to 25th September 1944, when the division landed in Holland to establish a bridgehead north of Waal in an attempt to force the end of the war in Europe by a left hook sweep by 21st Army Group into the heart of Germany through the bridgehead established by the airborne troops. Now the final objective, as history tells us, was not achieved, but it was estimated that the operation was, at the time, 85% successful, and the efforts of the division had not been in vain. This was by 1945-46, but now history does tell us otherwise. The formation, the 1st Airborne Division, was withdrawn to England, and in May 1945 it went overseas again, landing in Norway, where the division formed part of the British Liberation Forces. Now the 6th Airborne Division, while the 1st Airborne Division was in North Africa, Sicily and Italy, the 6th Airborne Division, which had been formed in May 1943, was training and being equipped to play an important role in the invasion of Northwest Europe. The first parachutist of the division landed in Normandy soon after midnight on the 5th 6th of June 1944, with the object of seizing the crossings over the River Orne and the Conn Canal near Benneville, thereby being in position to help one corps in the protection of the left flank of the British sector. In the hard fighting that followed, the division distinguished itself in the establishment of a bridgehead, when in August the order was given for a general advance, the division swept northeast to Le Havre and crossed the Seine to Honfleur. The division was withdrawn to the UK early in 1945 to prepare for its second airborne action. This was the assault of the Rhine in March. The division landed on the eastern banks of the river while Second Army made the long assault. The division took part in the sweep across Germany, which was halted only by the surrender of the German armies after British troops had reached the Elbe and schleswig holstein the division remained in Germany till the autumn of 45, when it was moved to the Middle East. The 5th Parachute Brigade left the division earlier. In July 45, it was dispatched to India to take part in the operations for the recapture of Malaya as part of the 34 Corps. The brigade was one of the first to land in Singapore at the conclusion of operations. So that's something to look out for. This is, as I said, the printed pattern. And it's a bit washed out. And also at some time in the past, it's had a bit of tape on the back where it's been stuck in a frame and also the remnants of glue where it's been stuck in an album because people did collect these they put glue on the back of them and they stuck them in scrapbooks so that's an original printed pattern for the right shoulder british airborne division divisional patch and if you see one don't let experts tell you that it's a fake because Pegasus never had a horn on its head, like a unicorn. That is actually the tip of the wing on the other side of his body.